I have all the reason today to be as joyous as possible because I have the happiest band from Pune city with me today joining me on on videos playlist <laughs> Pratika Gopinath Sanyant Narod from Easy Wonderlings thank you so much guys for doing this and you know for talking to me today um like I said I am extremely happy because I am one of those few people who has been dancing along like like you know like a hopeless teenager to every single song yeah. from Cotton of Parade the latest ep that has taken everyone by storm um firstly congratulations for all the love and reception that you guys are getting um before everything else i just want to firstly begin by asking how are you guys doing how has this been how has this year rolled out for you uh, super good think, so far uh, Go for, go for it. it. So we've actually been working this whole, I mean, this whole year and the year before on this EP. So we're like super excited to finally release the songs. We've been playing them live a lot, but haven't actually. I mean, now that we've released it, it's so much more fun. And yeah, put a lot of hard work and effort and blood, sweat, and tears into this EP and revising it and re-revising it. And uh, we're finally, you know, happy. with the product and so glad that you guys can listen to it and that you guys are loving it and like we can feel the love so, so far so good like i haven't stopped raving about castles in the air to everybody that i know is a mutual fan of uh, the band as much as i am uh, yeah, I, like i said i i just i just start waltzing along with it um, that that there's this, you know i i feel like you know i have kind of walked into la la land i feel like a disney or princess of sorts whenever i'm listening to that song so it, that that puts me into a different mood altogether uh, unlike uh, the person you are talking to right now to the course of the <laughs> but um i have to say guys what a phenomenal journey has it been for the band uh, and as someone who has been listening to the band from the very beginning because i remember when i first heard as written in the stars and i think i started uh, listening to it uh, somewhere towards the end of 2017 to 2018 i think it was 2017 was when it was released and yeah. then i have seen uh, the band literally growing from strength to strength um, you know you've had the choices publications and uh, you know the choices uh, streaming platforms and all the big players um, say the nicest things about the band um i want to first begin by asking you know when easy wonderlings decided to come together first of all how did the bandmates come together how did everybody meet uh, i i believe you all come from different cities um so how did uh, you know all these different energies come together and then make this happy uh, band that we now know as easy wonderlings so uh, malay and i malay is the bassist so we founded the band uh, in yeah. 2016 ish um and that time um um uh, so he was finishing his uh, studies from satyajit ray uh, you know institute and i had just finished my masters from the us and i had come down and he he knows that i had written some songs just for the heck of it i'm not even music, i'm i was not even a musician or whatever so it's like well, i i'm very good at my technical side you do your creativity stuff and so he'll record it and i'll do it. but i said there's a problem but i I can hear a girl's voice in the song, so we need to find a girl. And then uh, Malay's mom uh, happened to teach in university, you know, where I also happened to pass out from, uh, called Flame University. So then uh, Malay is like, "Listen, dude, uh, I know that there is this girl uh, in Flame where we can just ask her to come and sing it out, just try it out." So then that was Pratika, literally the first girl we. <laughs> we had no options. That's the only girl we knew. <laughs> I had no options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like we had no option. We were like, okay, that's the only girl. He's like, yeah, dude, she's really good. And then she came and she sang. That time, we fell off on the like floor. We were like, damn, this girl's damn good. And then uh, from Flame itself, through other while we were there jamming with her, we found out there were other really talented kids from different batches, of course. So found the basic set of groups, and we all we all became friends there itself. And then uh, when we are about to record the EP. uh we needed a violinist and a western flautist so uh western flautist is not dream only where the hell are you going to find a western flautist but um uh, luckily uh while we were recording we took a small break and we wanted to you know went to this cafe nearby and our friends cafe only called pagdandi and over there we saw this little girl playing western flute with her mom in the cafe we were like what 
this is a dream what's happening uh, and then that was sia and uh, we immediately caught her and told my told malay do the talking make sure uh, convince her to come come and record with us and all and then she's like she just shifted from the us to india uh, to continue studying from here and all that and that time she was about 14 15 years old and she was like yeah let's do it and same with shardul also you know we uh, mm-hmm. found again to another friend we made a call in pune itself came together and so yeah so just when uh, we recorded the album in 2017 and there was eight of us then and then there is eight of us now so luckily a nice eight people wandering is still going on full power Pratika, how did you react to the whole scheme of things back then? You know, uh, with uh, Malay and Sanyan uh, approaching you to be the vocalist of the band, uh, what uh, what was your mind space at that time when uh, you know uh, things were falling in place? It was very random. Like I really didn't know either of them very well at all. And at that time, I think I was in the second year of college or first year of college. so they were just like a friend of mine just said hey somebody has written a song they need a singer do you want to go sing and i was like yeah sure i guess like i vaguely know of them and whatever so there was a recording studio in college itself we went there they just literally put me in the recording like in the booth and they're like yeah yeah just sing whatever just sing it like he had already written enjoy it while it lasts so he just said go in and sing and whatever so i went in i sang i was like yeah cool then another like two months nothing happened i didn't get here back i was like yeah whatever it's fine then after two months he calls me he's like hey by the way you know the song sounds really nice and uh, i played it for some of my friends and they really liked it do you want to start a band and at that time i was had nothing to lose i was like why not it'll be fun so uh, that's how it started and i think shortly after that we started recording the album and we got called to nh7 that's when i was like whoa this is actually like pretty cool And at that time, I had no idea what NS7 was. I had never been oh. to NS7. Yeah, for one girl coming from Chennai, not knowing anything about the music scene at all. So uh, I think after NS7, like I really got an idea of okay, this is what a band is about. You know, we're doing a lot more performances. Recording is really fun. Performing live is really fun. And I think we just got really close as friends as well. So I think starting from college, it was. why don't we try and do this let's see how it goes by the end of college it was like hmm, maybe i should try doing this full time it sounds like feels like a fun thing to do and having a good time and thankfully my parents were also like go for it you take a year try it out see how it goes and uh, thankfully the year has become 3 years and 4 years and 5 years so yeah it's been super fun I mean, it's amazing that uh, you actually say that you know that you had that kind of uh, parental support. Where uh, I mean, forget about them being sure or certain about you know how things were uh, you know progressing for you. I mean, even you yeah. were just going along with the flow, and I think that was the mind space that kind of reflected in the initial songs that were a part of as written in the stars the EP. Um, yeah. I, you know, some of the titles of some of the songs that clearly reflects the mood that was. uh of the band at large where you all had uh, no clue about where was it heading i mean there was there was absolutely no uh, regard to the consequences then but you all were just going along yeah. with the flow and it and lo behold how has it played out for you guys because uh like you said and it's even weekend or something that you did not even have um, an idea about but you played it back then and now again you are uh, you know you just played you've just played as we speak you've just played for you know again at uh, the recently concluded uh, 13th edition of nf7 weekend um and you've also bagged the slot for yourself at lola palooza which is making us debut in yeah. india so how do you look at how have all these possibilities you know fallen in your lap uh, you know in almost 5 years of uh, you having existed as an out Mm, I guess we are uh, extremely grateful uh, about all the things that's happening, and also I feel like uh, one thing that we've always had is a great community of supporters. Like they'll go the extra mile to make sure that the music is heard by somebody, you know. So they make it their own. Like we are all like one. Our music. So our music is their music. So that's the kind of support and love we got. Um, and uh, so eternally grateful so. for that kind of support. and second yeah, is think- even the learning in terms of production uh and all that uh songwriting uh even with the band including the band and a lot more holistic and 
uh, manner, you know, uh, from production to composing to everything, just to kind of uh, work that out. Even as performers, we've grown because that time you weren't even prefer performers. Yeah. Now uh, we are, uh, you know, much greater sounding band. Live uh, live act is a lot more fun uh, than what we started out initially. Uh, so I think we've grown like in all angles. Uh, yeah. Yes, Pratina, and I you think starting to... out, like you said, um, like at least the first album when we were doing it, we literally had no idea of what the music scene was. We had no pressure to sound like this or sound like that. It was just very, almost like an experiment where like, dude, we have some cool songs. Why don't we try and record it? And why don't we try and, you know, do something cool with it? That was kind of the mindset in the beginning. And I feel like as it's gone on, there has been, it's kind of, been similar in terms of like whatever is happening with the band members whatever is happening in the industry we know that what we're trying to create is something special and everybody is putting in that effort to kind of get that like whatever other stuff is going on we're still very much focused on the music and putting that as a first priority and it's so nice that people are actually like recognizing that and like are able to appreciate that the work that we're putting towards making music that we think is like pure and we really enjoy this. I, I guess that's what speaks about why, um, you know, and no matter where you perform at, it, uh, you know, every set of yours is so well received. I think Pratika, you pretty much uh, nailed that Ohamad on its head where, where, pretty much nailed the nail on its head where I think you pretty much uh, sum it up. Uh, because I have always, uh, in my right, as uh, somebody who has been actively listening to independent artists over the last couple of years, I have always uh, been very, you know, I've always been in the affirmative of the fact that, you know, if you are true to what you're doing, and if you feel that um, what you're making will find its connect, then I don't think there are these other paraphernalia that you should be chasing. So as, yeah. uh, you know, members of the community in general, how do you look at where um, you see other um, musicians around you, whether they are solo acts or whether they are uh, bands? Um, a lot of them are falling into the trappings of, you know, these number games or uh, the social media cloud. How do you, how do you uh, receive all of this? Because you guys are pretty much a testament to the fact that you know, as long as you're doing your music and y'all are uh, putting out work that y'all firmly believe in, uh, I think that should be all that it speaks for what the band is about. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, at this point as an artist, I mean, I we as for Easy Warnings, I know that so many things are working regardless of social media and all the other stuff. But I would be lying if I told you those aren't important. Mm. I feel like media is extremely important as an artist because it is another channel that you can really take advantage of if you can really, you know, uh, learn to play with it. Uh, but of course, not get smudged or like sunken in that cloud, you know. Yeah. Uh, but be mindful about it uh, because it is important and a lot of artists are making their living uh, just because they have a good social media following, you know. Um, and so that could be one way they could fund their album or, you know, and other things that happen because we are a band. And so, so many independent singers or songwriters, that could be one way they can actually make a living, right? Um, and uh, numbers and Spotify and all that do matter. Uh, so even we, for example, we try and... Uh, because labels have a hold, right? With yeah. all this, they will... Uh, put you in a bunch of, they have a hold with Spotify and all these distributors have a good hold with Spotify. Uh, so uh, they will make sure that your song is pushed out. But for singer songwriter, I mean, independent songwriters, it's a lot more difficult. And everybody, uh, uh, and having those numbers is important. And your goal has to make, uh, one of the variables should be how to we maximize those numbers. Um, uh, but um, Again, it's a it's something that marketing has to be given one of those very important uh, this thing because a lot of say songwriters that I see uh, nowadays they give so much importance in the recording composing part but they immediately it's out they just forget about it. one Rolling Stone article and then that's the end of it you know that they think that's that's all but then that's another 
the another 50% of the journey starts from there. You have to figure out live performances, plan and uh, tour, plan this, plan uh, talk shows, uh, plan other stuff. All these things are very, very important that a lot of artists need to take into consideration. And then you will see the growth organically happen anyway. You know, you'll find, although it's less in number, but there'll be a good solid amount of group that you can count on to support your music for a longer, longer period of time. But this constant hustle has to happen uh, for you to kind of grow in a very sustainable, organic fashion. And I think um, um, pertaining to the question that you asked as well, like even if people are trying to follow trends to get numbers, even if that's mm -hmm. something that people have in their mind because they want to get more popularity, they want people to listen to their music, there is a way of doing it originally. Like, right. don't blindly follow what somebody else has done. Think a little bit, like, ahead of that, add a little bit of original, originality to, you know, even within that trend. And I think that's what might be appreciated. That would still give you your numbers and you can still kind of retain a little bit of originality and a little bit of expression through that. I'm glad you say that, Pratika, because I you know, actually see this Pied Piper syndrome kind of happening where uh, one person does it and then suddenly you see, like, a string of, uh, people who are actually following that and in the bargain they don't realize that okay you're I mean you decided to jump onto the bandwagon great but what good is it actually doing to you what good is it uh, you know how is it uh, in any way making a difference I, I've always felt that you know maybe instead of concentrating on following trends you could very much concentrate on doing what you do and uh, you know maybe invest your energy in pushing that uh, that that's that's something that I have always felt. Uh, but uh, coming back to uh, the live performances, I think 2022 is the year where, um, of course, you know, live gigs now thankfully have become uh, a normal thing again. I think there hasn't been a more uh, satisfying feeling than re really watching uh, bands and artists really go all out there. It's like I'm just happy seeing every day on Instagram that somebody's performing here or there. There's there's a gig happening every week. Um, sometimes now there have there are four or five uh, big ticket uh, events lined up in the same weekend, and you know, people are left confused as to where which one do we attend. So I'm just happy that artists are performing out there again. I think uh, back in 2020, uh, y'all were about to travel to Austin for the SXSW, and that's when COVID played spoil sport. Uh, so how do you? I mean, how do you feel that, you know, now you guys have hit the road and you have just done, you know, a multi-city autumn tour across India with uh, Mali and uh, Raghav Miyati guesting for you at, uh, you know, Bangalore and Pune, uh, respectively. Uh, do you want to let us uh, know about the experience? Um, it was a lot happening uh, because during the middle of the tour is when the EP also got. So October 7th, we were already, I think, in Delhi or Gahati or some place. Uh, so a lot was happening. Uh, ideally, we should have put the music out, waited for two months and then gone on tour. But then it would have been too late, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it had to happen then. Uh, because no point going on tour in December, you know. Uh, yeah. While the festival scene is happening, Christmas and all, it's just the worst time to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, But this tour was great. Uh, Insider came on board to kind of help uh, plan it out. Um, and obviously we wanted to do something with Mali. We've been talking for some time. She's also Malu represent. Uh, so from Kannur. So we are like, Hey, Mali, let's do it this time. Come on, Bangalore and all. She's like, cool, let's do it. And then, uh, Raghav also, um, we obviously only interacted online. So I was like, let's just, uh, have, make this an we excuse for us to meet. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and hang out. So he was like, cool, I'm coming down to Pune. Let's do something fun. Uh, so that happened. It was the ending show was with Raghav Miatil in Pune. Um, but the store itself was amazing because we covered a lot of cities, new territories that we haven't played before, like the Northeast and Zero and festivals that we wanted to play, like Zero. Uh, even this year now, uh, a lot of festivals that we wanted to play, we are playing. Even Echoes of the Earth, uh, we are playing. So really uh, super, super blessed that this has happened. Uh, but yeah, bummer that South by Southwest didn't happen. Still not over that. <laughs> but yes, <Yeah>. so that's me. <laughs> yes, Pratika? 
no so we i think we tried again to go to sx in uh, 22 but again because of covid we couldn't go but yeah. uh, the show must go on so we were like we will plan our own tour here in india <laughs> um so that that's how this whole tour came about and um, the super happy because the songs have been received really well like even when we were on tour when we played live people are really grooving to it and really enjoying it and they're like when is it coming out we're like actually it's out already <laughs> so uh, it was really it was really nice like you could feel a lot of love and people are really liking the new music so we are just like super happy about that yeah one of the uh, stand out tracks of the ep enemy gets featured in a dipika padukone star earlier in the year and i remember mm. when i saw gehraiya i remember that particular scene where the song starts playing in the car and i'm like wait have i heard this i heard this and i remember putting out a story tagging you guys and saying yay hello hello familiar pune voice i recognize you guys and i remember that that, that a little sweet exchange i wish i don't Instagram when um, I had just finished watching Gera Iya when it uh, you know premiered on OTT. Firstly, how did that thing happen? Because I was very happy to see that um, you know th- this kind of representation for a relatively younger band. Correct. No, that's because uh, Ankur uh, is a friend and he 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 heard the tracks and then uh, so then oh, out of the blue he just reached uh, by out. By Ankur, you mean Ankur and- Tiwari? Yeah, Ankur Tiwari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. And then Ankur was like, "I just want to see if uh, this track might work." I'm like, "Are you serious? It's an English song, you know that, right?" <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, it is. I know." I'm like, "Are you sure? It's it's not a peppy back. It's like a sad one." He's like, "Yeah, I'll send it over. We'll just figure we it out." We didn't know what the music was about. I mean, what the movie? I, I mean, I mean, you're you're so you you like, are you... playing your own product. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point, because it's a Hindi movie, and we are like, ah, does he even know what he's dealing with here? <laughs> Uh, so then, uh, and then he put it on, and then he's like, "It's working." I'm like, "What? It's working? Okay, cool." Uh, and then it went on, and then you put the story. I'm like, and then that time we haven't even watched the movie. I'm like, oh, it's actually there. Okay, let's watch the movie. So then watch the movie, and yeah, then. <laughs> Then oh, yeah. we realized it fit, like it fit actually fit into the vibe of the movie because we didn't even know what the movie was about before that. Now that we do and know the fact, plot you know of the what, movie, in the, in the of... scene where it plays out, also it, it the timing is so perfect because she's so uh, you know I mean the, the character is having this uh, her own set of suspicions over somebody she loves, and it's so fitting that the enemy plays out right there because she's like she can't <laughs> she can't differentiate whether she has to call this person a loved one anymore or no. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. The, the, this is this is some strange uh, but uh, it's it's yeah, a very yeah. smart <laughs> it's a very smart uh, storytelling move at that point yeah. um it uh, but uh, guys you have also uh, uh, had the opportunity to, to you know uh, share the stage with Jose Gonzalez Anushka Shankar or J and Incubus in your uh, particularly short span uh, any particular incident or any uh, amazing um, anecdotes from your interactions with them uh, off stage that you remember that uh, you got you know you hold very dear to yourself as a as a band so uh, we didn't really get to interact much and especially in the festival time we just give all the artists their own space we ourselves are on our wanderings are on, wandering around in our own little uh, spaces uh but uh um if maybe yeah i don't know uh, if something interesting happens i'll let you know uh in the future but mm-hmm. i usually with these big festivals we just you know give all the other artists their space uh, especially when we see them right next to us we're just like why do we want to be that person to nudge them and say hi and all that you know so uh, usually yeah. yeah we just be ourselves and we just let them be otherwise we be like oh my god look it's that guy but then not actually be like just be cool guys it's okay <laughs> like no yeah. but it's uh, yeah i think in the festival everyone's doing their own thing we also love to go and like watch all the other artists from in front of the stage so yeah. we actually don't spend a lot of time in the artist village itself we pretty much going around listening to all the other acts so we don't actually meet a lot of artists like the big big artists there. yeah you know that highly speaks about you people as uh, you know of course you are a uh, easy wanderlings collective but it also speaks about the amazing human beings that you you know that you guys are because uh, that energy reflects into your music and your music has kind of resonated with people uh, so hugely that um you know there have been instances where 
your music has been featured uh, you know in a lot of mental health initiatives you know whether it was a cop26 at uh, glasgow that happened in 2021 or uh, the outrage and optimism podcast in 2020 or the global mental health fest uh, you know for the world federation of mental health in 2020 uh, how do you look at uh, creating music that makes a difference uh, you know, in the lives of others, you know, but making music for the greater good. Mm, I think uh, it's, I'm glad it has become what it is. But when I make music, it's not because that's what I want to make it for. You know, okay. we talk about things that we genuinely have a strong belief and we do it with utmost honesty, note by note. Even every guitar, note by note, we spend that much time to create every little thing. Um, and we put it out then, and we know that art, the there is a bunch of tribe that will connect with it deeply. And when they feel like, and a lot of them told us that, you know, the music is healing. Music has gotten through, them through a very tough period. Yeah. And, uh, and we are glad that we were there for them and they are there for us. And so that we can only say that it's, we're just humbled to be part of their life in some way like that. And, you know, uh, and if our music is doing a little bit of help here and there, nothing like it. It just makes us a lot more happier and gives us a lot more reason to keep doing what we're doing. Atika? Um, yeah, I think uh, at least Sunny composes a lot of the songs in terms of the lyrics and stuff, which have, I think when he does it, you know that he strongly believes in what he's writing. And I feel like if he believes in what he's writing, a lot of people will connect with it. So it's kind of happened maybe indirectly. Uh, Sunny cares about a lot of things and talks a lot of, about a lot of things. And uh, I feel like a lot of people connect really strongly with that, be it environmental issues or, you know, just being like looking inward and thinking about things that have happened. Uh, I think he believes strongly in what he writes about. So people connect with it for sure. Like, I'm not sure if, uh, if, you know, if uh, fans of the band or people who are watching uh, my Humble channel are even aware of, I believe uh, back in 2018, uh, when you all performed for, uh, you know, flood relief uh, when Nagaland was hit by floods. And, uh, you know, you all actually decided to give a large chunk of your artist fee, uh, you know, to uh, help in aiding uh, relief for, uh, you know, people affected by the floods. I um uh, is that correct? I, I just happened yeah. to. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we did that uh, small amount. We uh, we did a show uh, and at Isa University, Isa College in Pune, they gave us their nice fancy theater, and we uh, we invited people, and uh, yeah, we gave almost what I don't know a lot of ninety percent or something to the charity. That's. Even uh, during the tour, and you know, wherever we can, we try and give a little bit because we get a lot. Yeah. So uh, I think it's part of the. We try and make sure it's part of the band's ethos that giving back is also extremely important. You guys have, I mean, I've always loved you as a band, and now you guys have. Um, I mean, you have all my respect and uh, good wishes, Jolly. Uh, but I have to, before we conclude this interview, I have to ask you about. Uh, Mayflower, the beautiful collaboration that happened with uh, Nikhil D'Souza. Um, firstly, he himself in his right, he's somebody who has been around for, you know, longer than a decade. So how was it, how was the experience of working with him and um, any, any, any particular insightful, uh, you know, um, any particular anecdote about his way of working that, uh, you know, you guys have kind of uh, taken up to I think he's extremely easy to work with. I remember the first time we, we went and did the recording twice. First time his throat was really bad. Like he yeah. had a bad cold. And yet he like gave up his entire life trying to sing it. Uh, he, until his voice was nearly <laughs> gone. Uh, so when he, we went back and then came back again a couple of weeks later. Uh, when he said let's try it. Let's, I, I, we told him that we'd like to give it another shot. Because it was all right. What he sang was all right. But we knew that he can do better. Right? And since it's our first collaboration, we were like, uh, Nikhil, let's, how about we try this again? He's like, yeah, let's do this. Then we uh, properly went it because we knew what his potential was. 
and we didn't want the world to see something that was just there you know so he yeah. really when there was no voice itself left he was just like giving all all and not and without any tantrum nothing you know he was so easy to work with all he would do is like ha huh, come 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 next bhi yeah, yeah, it's all simple he would be just be like yeah okay i'm like can we do this a little bit like this like yeah, yeah sure 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 such a power yeah, guy is, you know so very like receptive to anything and everything we had to say in terms of can you sing it a little bit like this can you add a little bit of this and he was like ready to you know ready to try oh. anything that he could to help like get the track as we wanted to and i like for me that was huge like even if you're not able to do it which he did it awesomely but even if you're not able to do it just that willingness to try and willingness to give it a shot already you're like you know you have my respect and he did it like so beautifully and the track has come out really well we really love the collaboration and he's so easy to work with such a nice guy we went and did a shoot and all after that and he came and it was awesome but uh, guys uh like we have already discussed and you know um, it it just it just need not be uh, reemphasized again and again but clearly you all are absolute favorites of everyone of an audience that loves to listen to you of the community you like um, people just love raving about you and your music uh, every now and then but if i have to ask uh, the lovely uh, you know the lovely people of z1 links as to who do they love listening to when they are sitting and unwinding like you rightly said you all are also the people um, when you all are at fest at music fest you all love checking out other people's sets so who do you love uh, enjoying listening to pratika you go na funny you thinking so yeah he's thinking <laughs> so i am a like kind of person who listens to one thing and if i like it i will just listen to it on repeat forever so music festivals is a nice place where you can go and like check out new music with no even if you don't know them from before you're going there with a fresh idea of like who are these guys and really getting to experience like um what they are as a live act i heard one band called soul from sri lanka who are like really nice groovy kind of stuff at n7 i'm not sure if you've heard of them but if you haven't go check them out i have um to. yeah yeah and uh, otherwise in general listening or do you mean like a indian uh, Uh, ja- uh, from from the indian in, uh, from the indian in uh, independence space independence scene yeah your so favorites i rear who do you like sunny let me think wait i oh. like uh, dhruv vishwanath um dhruv vishwanath and uh, i also like some other stuff from pratik kohar um that's about it i think at the top of my head these two are the ones that i that i can think of um these are strictly really singer songwriters yeah. you've chosen na huh? i mean you know, but there are bands also funny correct oh, also and parwas i like i like parwas's work oh uh, dude that's so good uh, we've seen yeah. them live a couple of times it's just like so good uh, and peter cat peter cat recording yes yes yeah that'd be good and yeah, yeah there are a lot of singer songwriters coming up too so they also have a lot of cool stuff yeah Oh, Last and F sixteen. Ah, <laughs> she's like the, Chennai people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing like that yeah. for me. It it yeah. gives me all the more uh, pride, you know. Whenever it's I, it's a band I know that's from uh, Chennai or from Kerala. I, I we have already discussed this off the record, uh, Pratika. I I'm playing from both sides. <laughs> yeah. half yeah half from kerala and half from half tamil from nadu. kerala half from tamil nadu but uh, i mean guys to conclude this interview all i can say is that it's just amazing uh, you know being a spectator to your beautiful journey and i just want to uh, conclude this interview by asking you guys what's next now after you know the festive frenzy um uh, fades away <laughs> um after this uh <clears throat> i think if it happens you will be <laughs> one of the first to know until it happens i'm not jinxing it so let's just say there is something exciting again going. again that's a very very south indian thing that you just did you know like we, we should we should just do a drishti like this you know right now <laughs> <laughs> proper drishti we need please do it yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what i tell my mom you know before when when something is about to happen i'll tell her i'm like before the whole neighborhood know just please, please keep it yourself nobody wants to know <laughs> yeah but we have a lot of fun things in the works in the plan so before it happens let's not ruin it uh, yeah. but yeah as soon as it happens you'll know and a lot of fun things coming up can't wait uh, thank you so much pratika and sanyant it was lovely chatting with both of you today and um, i cannot wait to watch you perform at the next uh, live show in my city or if i happen to be in a city where you're performing at i always want to be a part of everything that you guys do and thank you, you so come. much for being That's one so of long. the few bands um who has always actively reached out to me and has always uh, you know shared your work with me and shared your journey with me and i cannot thank you enough for that thank you so much thank you for thank having thank you so much for having us thank you so much